So this is going to be a big shift from the previous talks. I don't have any pretty pictures of exoplanets or meteorites. I have black text and a white background, so prepare to be bored. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the work I'm doing right now. And this is uh, still incomplete, but sort of a precursor to what we're doing and how this uh, plays into the greater astrobiology, uh, astrobiology community. And what we're trying to do is build an environmental chamber that can simulate the temperature, pressure, and humidity of Mars and conduct laboratory experiments to see uh, under what conditions brines form, particularly brines with uh, salts like sodium, magnesium, or calcium perchlorate. So these are salts that we know exist from uh, the Phoenix Lander and uh, salts that, you know, with uh, data from MSL too, seem to be uh, ubiquitous on Mars. So reinterpretation of the Viking Lander results also indicates that there's a very good chance of these perchlorate salts being sort of everywhere on Mars or many places on Mars. And we want to see, you know, are these salts something that are able to form solutions? How do those solutions move in the, the soil? And, you know, if there's a chance for present day habitability or, or a, a current water cycle on Mars, what does that look like? And so we're doing this with actual laboratory experiments here on Earth and uh, trying to extrapolate that out both, you know, the chemistry side and the, the astrobiology side. So the background here is we really start with the Phoenix Lander. And in 2008, uh, Phoenix touched down in the area, this, the Martian polar region, where uh, it's not the ice caps, so not quite Antarctica, but you know, more like the Alaska or northern Canadian tundra. So this is a, an area where we know there was a lot of subsurface hydrogen. And when it landed down, we blew off these big areas here where we found lots and lots of ice. We scooped, scooped down into the soil. We see ice. There's ice everywhere, so lots and lots of ice, water ice. Very good. We also had the wet chemistry lab in Phoenix. We know that there are perchlorate salts, uh, most likely uh, sodium and magnesium, and also uh, quite possibly calcium perchlorate based on reanalysis of the wet chemistry results and results we have from MSL. And we also see uh, the formation of some spheroids on one of the lander struts. And so it was thought that maybe that these spheroids could be a result of deliquescence, uh, the absorption of atmospheric water vapor onto these salts to form uh, the spheroid, this sort of wet spot on the lander strut. And so uh, one of the things that we're doing, again, is these looking at phase diagrams as we uh, sort of have a generic salt here and go from 100% salt on the right to 100% water on the left. And so this is a solution where you have uh, solid salt and uh, a salt solution, so sort of liquid plus solid salt. Salt has precipitated out on the right. Uh, you have a salt solution, so it's all liquid in this part, and then ice precipitating out. And so what you have is uh, essentially many conditions where you'll have some amount of liquid solution and then uh, up down to the detected temperature. So you'll essentially have a, the salt precipitate out if you're on the right side of this diagram or the ice precipitate out if you're on the left side. And so you'll have some uh, liquid solution of water and, and salt until you reach the eutectic, and then you just have solid salt and ice as you reduce the temperature. And so we have very hygroscopic salts that we found with Phoenix, these perchlorates. And what we see is a huge freezing point depression with these salts. So uh, this is some work from Goff and uh, Chevrier, a few others. Um, Fairly new work with uh, sodium perchlorate on the left, magnesium perchlorate on the right, again, consistent with the Phoenix results. And we see that uh, what, we're, uh, what we're doing here is essentially starting with a salt exposed to the Martian atmosphere at uh, similar to Mars temperatures. So it goes down to around negative 50 C here. So we'd like to go a lot colder. And that's one of the things that we're trying to do with our experiments. And we're uh, ramping up the relative humidity in this simulated Martian air. and so. As we go from completely dry air to completely wet air, we're moving across in this phase diagram until we get a point where there's deliquescence. So uh, the deliquescence point, in this case, depends on the hydration state of the initial salt. And uh, for the anhydrous phase, you have deliquescence early at this sort of uh, metastable uh, point where we have these yellow lines. And you have, once it's deliquesced, it's going to stay in that solution for a longer period of time. So, um, but yeah, the, I'm murdering this. Uh, the anhydrous phase, deliquesces early, 
uh, earlier than we would have expected just based on the, the solution phase diagrams. And then the uh, monohydrate also uh, deliquesces a bit early. And so this is sort of extending the range in which we expect liquid solutions to exist on Mars. And so uh, once you deliquesce, the other thing about these salts is you have the uh, kinetic inhibition where once you deliquesce, it's harder for the salt to, to refreeze or to evaporate. And so we don't actually have efflorescence, the point where the salt dries out, until you drop down to much lower relative humidities. And so what we see here is a, a plot. These red lines are uh, a, sim a simulation of the Viking 1 lander site. And you'd see that with these salts' presence, there, there's a very good chance that during certain points of the day, you would have liquid solutions form on Mars. If you consider calcium perchlorate as well, uh, these are new results not yet published in a paper, but from uh, Newding and Goff as well. Uh, calcium perchlorate is pretty much going to be liquid if it's exposed to the air on Mars, you know, in many places. So this is going to be a, it's extremely hygroscopic salt, and it's going to want to form a liquid solution. So uh, again, these need to be probed more carefully. Um, you see, again, we're stuck to about negative 50 here. And if we're talking about eutectic temperatures on the order of uh, 200 or maybe 170 Kelvin, um, we really need to take these experiments further. And that's what we're trying to do with our chamber. So again, we don't quite know these based on the models alone, especially models with uh, aqueous solutions. And so we're trying to, oh, sorry, one more. <laughs> we're trying to do that experimentally. Um, this is an example of why you would care about this in the astrobiology community. Uh, obviously, we need liquid water for life. And this is uh, from Jones and Lynn Waver and Clark. And uh, we have plotted here the uh, pressure on the left-hand side and temperature on the, uh, the horizontal axis. And this is essentially the phase space of Mars. And then on, on top of that, uh, so Mars being the brown area, we have the phase space of liquid water uh, and the phase space of life as we know it on Earth and sort of extrapolate it out. And so this is trying to help us identify regions on Mars where you can start to discuss present day habitability or where life might still exist or where life did exist. And so that's what we're trying to do in the grand scheme of things. So this is what our chamber looks like now, sort of the, the cartoon version. Um, vacuum chamber with a thermal plate, single thermal plate inside, uh, a sample holder, the thermal plate is uh, 24 inches by 24 inches, so we can have quite large samples. Uh, it's a very large vacuum chamber, which you know essentially I can fit in it. Um, we go to Martian pressures. We have a simulated Martian atmosphere. Uh, temperatures, we can go down to negative 196 Celsius, essentially the, the boiling point of liquid nitrogen. That's our primary coolant. And then uh, we add water vapor to the system using a, a bubbler condenser system. And we're trying to sort of fine tune this and calibrate it now. But the temperature and pressure are very good. Still a little more work to do with the humidity, but we're getting to the point where we can start to do, to do experiments with this. And so uh, a picture of it actually in the lab, again, pretty big. You know, you could crawl inside, test the space suit if you want. Um, the, uh, the range, we've designed this specifically for Mars, but you can also extrapolate to uh, Titan and uh, if you wanted to do studies of the moons of Saturn or Jupiter. Um, something like that. And uh, we have a Raman spectrometer inside to measure deliquescence, but we have a number of viewports available to also look at other, uh, to enable other instruments as well. So, and then just some nice shiny pictures. So uh, the cooling system, all PID controlled. We're running at negative 150 Celsius at this point. The thermal plate inside, and then uh, just looking down from above at a very small sample holder, you know, about that big. So um, what we're planning to do is, again, these, uh, improve these phase diagrams experimentally, determine uh, not only if these salts will deliquesce on Mars. I think that's been answered, that these salts will deliquesce. But how much time are they going to form? You know, for how long will they form liquid solutions? And uh, how much time do they need? And how much time does you know, your extremophile or any Martian life that may exist need to, to survive in this environment. And so uh, with that, thank you and open up the questions.
um, I'm pretty curious with those perchlorates. Um, has anybody done kind of like the half-life of the reactivity of perchlorate versus how long you can actually keep that liquid solution? I mean, perchlorate's pretty reactive stuff, and if you have even basalts or anything like that, I would assume it's going to react pretty quickly. So in, in terms of, uh, I don't know that much with the, the reaction rates, but I think that it's actually quite stable. So in the, in the salt form especially. So once you have perchlorate, it stays around for a long time. And actually on Earth, a lot of the, it's mostly microbial breakdown that destroys perchlorate. So uh, the reason you see it build up on Mars is because you have, you might have some source process and there's not really anything to, there's, it's so dry that the water is not washing it away, which is what would happen in the Earth system. You, know, you only find perchlorate in very dry areas like the southwestern United States, the Atacama Desert, the dry valleys. Uh, what effect do you think depth has on this? So are they going to just deliquesce at the surface? So you said like if you have perchlorate on the surface, you're going to make a liquid solution, but presumably for habitability purposes, you would want it to be a little bit deeper down in the soil where mm -hmm. it's a nice little habitat. So would they deliquesce if they're frozen up in a permafrost or something like that? Yeah, so the reason why the chamber is so big is because we want to look at you know, essentially the soil, uh, soil depths. And we want to see how perchlorate would move around in the soil. We don't see perchlorate immediately on the surface, especially at the Phoenix Landing site. You have to dig a little bit. And once you dig, you find lots of pockets of it. And so that's one of the things that we really want to understand is how is perchlorate being transported through the surface, uh, from the surface to these pockets and pore spaces in the soil. But uh, from what I've seen, I think it, it will actually, you know, that's the thing. Like, if you have calcium perchlorate open to the air, it's going to deliquesce on Mars, and it's going to form a liquid, and it's going to sink down into the soil. And then it's going to be maybe less likely to form a liquid. It's going to be, uh, it'll maybe stay liquid longer because the soil will help hold on to the moisture. So that's what we want to know is how, you know, not just how these salts, you know, the first stage is just the salt in the atmosphere. But the second stage is really how does the soil interact with the salt in the atmosphere system to change, you know, what's going on. Okay, thanks very much.